we are seeking. I want to look quickly at capital projects. And Mr. Speaker, sorry. And I want to unusually reference the leader of the opposition in my intervention on this. Because I received a clip recently, a few days ago, where he toured the diaspora and a question was put to him and sent out into TikTok land around the state of the healthcare facilities. And I don't think it was AI, artificial intelligence. I think it was him. And he, his response, you know, was, wasn't, wasn't very gracious, <laughs> uh, but also, I dare say, not very logical. His response was that our priorities, yes, you did actually, our priorities, our priorities were not correct, the government's priorities, because we were there building out buildings. And what we really should be doing is solving the problem of bed shortage. And people were waiting in chairs for bed. And, uh, you know, I, 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 it caused me to pause a bit because I considered the logic of wanting to have more beds and not wanting to build more buildings. And, 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 and I had to you know, reflect. And I want to say that that road to transformation, Mr. Opposition Leader, colleague, requires significant investment in infrastructure if beds and waiting areas are going to be I don't know any other way to do it because the underinvestment over the many decades has left us so wanting that this government, having recognized that, has decided to invest more than any other in the infrastructure that is required to right size the facilities of healthcare. So I mean, no apologies for it, but I think it's a teaching moment for all of us because maybe that position is a commonly shared view on that side. I pause briefly at the Cornwall Regional Hospital because the Opposition leader did reference that in his response. And he has prompted me to reference him because it's the latest response I've heard on, as a critique of these. Now, let me just say up front, let me say up front, let me say up front. I fully appreciate the impatience that all Jamaicans, particularly those in Western Jamaica, would have around the need to complete the Cornwall Regional Hospital. I understand it. I have to. I have to. If I could wave a magic wand to make it repaired, it would, but it don't work like that. The reality is that this is a facility, this is a facility that has suffered from underinvestment and maintenance over many years, a facility that shows many signs of collapse before this government, and we had to pick it up and deal with it once and for all as a government. We have spent, we have, yes, we are transforming. We are tra transforming. And that's the other thing. We need to, we need to, we need to clarify something, uh, Mr. Speaker, because this 21 billion is being banded about. Either without proper understanding of the expenditure or just an attempt of mischief making. First of all, the 21 billion includes expenditures on Falmouth, on Noel Homes, on building out a new accident and emergency, the previously uh, Mount Salem Clinic, a new diagnostic center outside of the main building. Because for those who care to know the truth, they would appreciate that we had to build a hospital around the hospital to continue the services in order to repair the main building. I want to also say something about that expenditure. There is a difference between cost overrun and rescoping of cost. Because what is being banded about as cost overrun is not cost overrun. What started as fixing a ventilation system morphed into the stripping down of a 10-story building 
and a replacement of every single window, every single door, every ward, every operating theater. So in effect, what we are doing is building a brand new hospital for the people of West Bank. We have already spent $3.5 billion on this project. This year we are projected to spend $5.81 billion. And that final phase that we are in, work has now started to deal with the internals. And we will see the manifestations of that in the months to come. And Mr. Speaker, I'll say without fear or favor, I'm prepared to go in the public square and debate the case of Cornwall Regional, because it is a teaching moment about what will happen if we neglect our infrastructure. But this government is the government that will fix the problem once and for all. That was made in that clip in the diaspora community by the opposition leader, because he, he caused me to rearrange my speech a bit to satisfy, because I think it's important, because I think, I think when we talk to our Jamaicans, whether here or abroad, mm -hmm. While I agree with the debates and the cut and thrust of the debate, I think we have to be careful about false narratives. Yes. Either through ignorance, yes. lack of understanding, yes. or just plain mischief. Yes. And I'm not accusing you of any one of the above. <laughs> but something is wrong. Yes. Something is wrong. Something is wrong with that narrative. Because if you really want more beds yes. and more waiting area, and more doctors, and more nurses. How could you not want us hiring more doctors and nurses, building more health centers, building more hospitals to provide more beds? It don't make sense. If you really want a rehabilitated Cornwall Regional Hospital, rather than a band-aid quick fix measure, how could you not want us to strip down a building that was leaking, had electrical problem, had mold, and not build back a proper and new hospital. Remember I tell you, there's a difference between rescoping and cost overrun. And the mischief in your statement and statements on that side is that the impression is created that somehow what was supposed to be three or four billion almost turned 21 because somebody pocket the rest of it and gone somewhere with it. It is unfair. It is wrong. It is immoral. And it is mystery. <laughs> so, so the, re the reason why I'm, I'm making, I am making the, I am making the leader of the opposition the subject of my conversation. And and by the way, I respect the role that you have, and that you have to speak. So this is not, this is not a, this is not a broadside. Unfairly, but I want you to have the facts so that when you speak, yes. Yes. you can understand that we can have we can have our own facts. <laughs> facts is facts. <laughs> that's, that's the point, right? Facts is facts. So, so I call I I call the team together, and I said to them, I don't have a red flag. A red card. I, I, I call. <laughs> no, well, you listen to this now. And I'm hoping that the people of Jamaica are listening because it's a teaching moment. It's a teaching moment for all of us. I'm learning to, you know. I'm your humble servant. And I have to depend on the technocrats to give me the information. So I said to them this statement in the diaspora about priority and why people must get bed as opposed to building buildings. What is the end result of all that I've just said? in terms of build out. Yes. We have about 4,500 beds in the public health system now. On an average day, I am told by the technocrats, you have anywhere between three and 500 people trying to get a bed. That's what they tell me. So there is weight. Remember I said we are on the road to transformation. Yes. I, am not, I am not a false, false narrative carrier. We are on the road. We're not there yet. We're on the road, right? 4,500. Now, after this build-out takes place, which, we are, which is happening now, we are expected to have just over 6,000 beds in our hospitals. We are expected to add a 30% capacity to inpatient care. 
We are going to be adding thousands of feet of waiting area, some AC, yes. like Cambridge Health Center. We're expected to have a thousand new doctors, yes. 1,500 new nurses. Yes. We will have, in another year and a half, 15 brand new, some Jamaicans would call it new brand, operating theaters with new equipment, new equipment, and if you, if you add the four at Cornwall, it will be 19. And I'm saying to you, member, colleague, opposition leader, that will mean that the problems that you identify will be solved. I don't have a problem with your saying. We have a problem now because people wait. Because that would be a fact. But don't say that this government has mixed priorities because our plan is very clear. Yes, the true. government, the well, Prime Minister, and my colleague are moving in the right direction. Yes. And the people of Jamaica are going to better our world. Closing out for now, this is One Avenue News. Avenue for your news, views, reviews, and much more. New spot on the block where we chat. Looking forward to meet you in the comment section. So flick the subscription button, turn on notification bell. Let's journey together. And please remember, we need solution, not confusion. United we win my people, art of love.